beautiful day for racing here today. But the track temperature, 88 degrees, that's hotter than it's been the entire time we've been here. Really going to make these cars slide around, losing that grip. Here we go, DW. All right, boys, let's go racing. It's Sunday. Boogity, 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 boys. Just like yesterday in the Bush race, Ryan Newman on the bottom. In the 12 car, he gets the runoff. Turn two, J.B. McMurray, our winner yesterday in the 42 car, falls in behind him, running second. Right now on fresh tires, these guys will be running right around the bottom of the racetrack. Get his five bonus points for leading left here on the first lap. Daryl, on these fresh tires, everybody feels they're Superman for a while. Well, you do, but as you can see, uh, you, you know, you're forced to the outside. And of course, we had the bush race here yesterday, and there's plenty of grip up there. I think you'll see guys hopping to the outside right away, uh, trying to make those passes back in the field. McMurray, conserving nothing, goes for the lead on the inside, turn one. He's in the 42 car. Looks like he picks up the throttle so much earlier in the middle of the corner than Ryan Newman in the 12. He's just got a knack for this racetrack. Four straight Bush wins here, one again yesterday, and he is on a tear. He has that confidence. Brendan Gaughan may have scraped the wall coming out of turn number two. He continues, no, no apparent damage, just a little puff of smoke there. And at third place, Bill, a uh, rather Rusty Wallace, is under fire from Casey Kane. Brendan should uh, watch that hot spot thing. Right? Don't that wall jump out there and bite you. Casey Kane in that nine car. Remember, this is the car that won the race here in November, but it was with Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott made his first career start here in 1976. Casey Kane was not even born. 59-year-old Joe Ruckman uh, took two laps in the James Finch 09 and has pulled that car to the garage area. Rusty Wallace in the two car, he continues to lose spots. He lost a spot then to Jeff Gordon in the 24 and Jeff Green in the 43. The Petty car is right behind him now. Really got off a of turn uh, two over there really well. And, and boy, when you can man it over there, that's what happens. So you have to start working the throttle. The guy behind you doesn't. That works good unless somebody's in your way and you run over them. There you have to drive a car here as much with the throttle pedal as you do that steering wheel. Well, like Steve said, you need that egg under the pedal all the time because that's how it's going to be. A lot of history at Rockingham for that number 43. Richard Petty from Level Cross, just up Route 220. Brand new Petty Museum at Randleman, where you'll see a lot of that STP red and Petty blue. Worth a visit. And I, and I really think this is a race that Jeff Green could run well in. Uh, the car has run good here with Bobby Hamilton uh, back a few years ago, and uh, Jeff runs good here. So we can see some good things out of the 43 today. Two distinct grooves here, and Jeff Gordon is the first in turns three and four to run it way up on the high side, and we'll see a lot of that today. Oh, that's rim riding, and I love it, baby. You get up there and just let the rough side drag. And what I've been watching the last two or three laps, and we're only on about lap seven or eight, he's running the bottom in one and two. He's running the high groove in three and four. And, and there's a reason for that, Larry, believe it or not. The sun is setting. As it goes down in the west, it sets it. It shines on turns three and four, and it gets a little bit slicker than one and two. You see our Fox tracks, the number there, it says car links. That's how many car links he's behind leader, ja Jamie McMurray in the 42. You just always have to guess at that. Now we know it. The Fox track shows it to us. I'll tell you one thing we don't have to guess at, that's all those dodges up there in the first 10. A whole fleet of them. I just think the new rule change, Larry, I think it's played right into the Dodge car's hands. I don't know why. Something about the bodies, I guess, but this shorter spoiler, and uh, it seems to be playing into the Dodge's hands. Well, last year here, it was the Fords that cleaned house, took the first eight spots. This year, it's the Dodges. And, you know, Ford got a new nose, and they got more downforce on the nose than they had last year. That may turn out to bite them. Because the rear spoiler being reduced in size took rear downforce away. The balance on the car, difference from front and rear may be off. For more on the lead Dodge, Steve Burns. Hey, Mike, it took Jamie McMurray exactly three laps to say, guys, I'm loose already. His spotter, Lord Lanier, said, nice and easy does it. And we said, in 10 laps, those tires will drop off by a full second. Matt Yoakum. Either to the lap and a half for Ryan Newman to tell his crew chief, Matt Borland, that his 12 car is tight all the way around this racetrack. It was both loose and tight during the final practice session. Some changes have helped. They still have some work to do. 
And Matt, I watched that group this morning. They were not very good in the final practice yesterday. They pretty much changed everything but the roof number on that car. But but you got one of them that's loose, and he's complaining. You got one of them that's tight. He's complaining, but they're running the same lap speeds. <laughs> this group right here, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Elliott Sadler in the 38, we're riding here with Robbie Gordon in the 31. They're in desperation right now. They're stuck back in traffic. We're only 11 laps into this run. They're already a half a lap down to the leader. You cannot linger in the back. You've got to get going. I think Robbie got up in the wall here somewhere over there off of turn two, probably. Let's see if we can see. Well, here he is. He's up in that kind of that transition area we were talking about and smacks that wall right there where it sticks out. He's coming off DW's hot spot. He just hit it. She will be marked well before the day is over with. From Michael Waltrip's onboard camera looking back at Robbie Gordon. And, and I tell you, Jeff Gordon is making a really good, he's making up a lot of ground running that high line off of turns three and four. And we just, it's it's easier on the tires up there. I mean, you run where your car wants to run, where it feels the best, but it's so much easier on the tires. Plus, there's a lot of grip up there. Everybody tries to run the bottom. You see a real black streak around the bottom of the racetrack. There's a lot of grip up high up there. It's hard on, it'll eat the tires up a little bit more, Larry, because there's no rubber up there, but there's a lot of grip. And the front five begin to squeeze back together. McMurray, Newman, Kane, and Mayfield. And Jeff Gordon, the veteran of that group, sits fifth. Jeff Gordon continues to lead by seven tenths of a second over pole sitter Ryan Newman, Matt Kenseth up to third, Rusty Wallace fourth, three dodges, four in the top six, counting McMurray and Casey Kane. As you look at the leaderboard, Sterling Marlin's worked his way up into the top ten, as has Mark Martin. Yeah, Kurt Busch is lingering there in the 11th. Jeff Green was his bent up fender, is still hanging in there in 13th. And Scott Wimmer, he's 14th. Guys, I tell you right now, two of our veterans, Sterling Marlin in that 40 car, the Coors Light car, and Mark Martin in the six. These two guys have worked their way in the top 10. Sterling Marlin, no top five finishes last year. And just remember, Jeff Hammond, Mark Martin, this is where he got his first career cup win in October 1989. Larry, what you're talking about, Mark got a chance to speak with him this morning. And he was real excited about today's race. He really feels good about this tire combination. He thinks that when they drop off, a guy like him, a veteran like him, can come to the front, work his car on the bottom, work it on the top, and make his way and lead this race and possibly win it. Also, you talk about Sterling Marlin. Funny thing about him, when he got ready to qualify the day, the team spent all day practicing on race runs. Weren't worried about qualifying, just threw some tape on the nose and went out and made a pretty good effort, but they feel very good about this race car in the long haul. Yeah, a lot of guys worked on that. 11 teams worked on race setups on Friday because the forecast for yesterday was rain and they were a little bit fearful of that. And you watch that out to the back of Dale Jr.'s car and you say, where's Sterling going? Yeah. <laughs> he went to the bottom and Jr. went to the top. But you know, Larry, I still, I still think if I'm going to have my car one way or the other, I want to have it pretty fast on the get-go because if tires are going to fall off, I want to get me a big lead and then let them catch me. Coming toward the lead is Matt Kenseth, the 17 Whoa, passes he jumped, Newman He jumped second. a little sideways right there. That's that kind of push loose off of turn four. You run off that corner, and the track really opened it up. up to the rear. And what, and what will happen, they drive off in the corner, the car gets a push, in other words, you turn the front steering wheel, the front tires just slide. Oh, then when they finally the catch, the rear the wheel's going to break clear by you. And the difference in two and four is turn two, you got no room. So when it does that, you hit the fence. Over here, you got a little bit better angle coming off the corner. Mark Martin trying to make the move on Dale Jr. for eighth. Ninth place now. Yeah, and he's running the bottom. To Mark is running pretty well, too. And that's the, that's the line that you would expect Mark Martin to run because I've seen him race here, and his left wheels never get above the white line. Comers and goers, the fellow who led at the restart, Robbie Gordon, because he either took two or no tires to get track position, is back to 21st. Here's Robbie, four spots ahead of where he was running when that caution came out. Yeah, I mean, the problem right now, though, is I'm trying to see here how far he is behind the leader. He's uh, about 11 seconds in front of the leader right now, so he's over a half a lap down. And just to show you a little bit about what push loose is all about, 
Uh, we can take a look here uh, at uh, what incident that happened off a of turn four there a minute ago. Watch the 48 car. Now he's up top. Now right here he grabs a whole big handful of steering wheel. He's got to cut, 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 cut. He's in the throttle wide open. But see how the back end will hop out? And that's just from trying to get the throttle wide open with the wheels cut left. When the front finally bites, then the back pops out just a little bit. Yes. Got to be on your toes. Jimmy Johnson, they have just not found their self this weekend here. He's back in 27th position, and he's only about uh, seven seconds from being going to lap down to the leader, Jeff Gordon. Throttle, man. There's nobody out there smoother than what you are. Just work that For the lead. Smooth. You can do it. Matt Kenseth underneath Jeff Gordon powers his way to the lead. He started 25th. I believe, I honestly believe that man, uh, Matt Kenseth, is going to try to show everybody I can win a championship and I can win a lot of races too. Now you see Jeff Burton in the 99 car. Remember, he just came out of the garage area about 20 laps ago with a radiator change. He's sitting there 19 laps down, but he has about 20 or 25 less laps on his tires. Once again, this shows you, even if you don't have a good race car, and Jeff had a decent race car, how much new tires will do for you or fresh tires. I'm kind of anxious to see uh, how far these guys are going to try to stretch it on the on their first green flag pit stop. See how far they think they can go on these tires. And let me correct myself. Kenseth started 23rd not 25th but still gain 23 spots and come to the lead this early in the race in less than 100 laps. Casey Kane moving his Dodge up on Rusty Wallace. This is for fourth place, about two seconds behind the leader. And Daryl, I'm with you. I'm anxious to see about who, how, who's going to go the furthest on these tires because this race, it always seems to about this point in time of the race, get that green flag run to it. Cars kind of get settled down. Cars are starting to, they're getting a handle on a little better with adjustments they've made, and you get this long green run here. Well, if you could look at the total, if you look at the whole racetrack, we got cars everywhere. You know, there's cars all on all straight on both straightaways and all, all the corners. They're spread out now to where a driver's got a little room and he doesn't have to take any chances. And what's going to be a big factor, it's going to be about 10 or 12 laps. Our leader, Matt Kenseth, in the 17, he's going to start catching the tail in the field. And that's when he really gets in trouble sometimes. Those guys get into desperation trying to stay on the lead lap. I hate desperation. <laughs> Kevin Harvick's had kind of an up and down day. He sits in 24th, Matt. My Kevin Harvick will tell you if there's one racetrack on the schedule that he would love to delete, it would be Rockingham. He's never led here to Nextel Cup car. He led 24 laps yesterday in the Bush Series race and finished third. He told me the only thing that might have transferred, maybe a little bit of confidence, but it certainly has not helped in the handling of the car. He says the car is just junk. It is way too loose to drive. He's tried to move up high and see if the high line but it hasn't yet, Steve. Matt with Pat Trice and crew chief for Mark Martin. Pat, what is he saying about the race car? What adjustments have you made to get up into the top ten? So far, he's been pretty happy with it, though. We really haven't touched uh, five or four tours so far today, but, uh, you know, we're kind of waiting to see how it irons out the longer it goes. But right now, he's pretty happy with it. I'm sure we'll have to work on it a little bit, but uh, pretty good so far. Darrell, why is it the drivers have either a love it or leave it attitude about this place? Well, it, it's, it's so slick and, it, and it's so difficult to drive these cars with 800 horsepower around a track that's slick like this. It, it can just absolutely, it frustrates you so badly that you just want to get out of the car and go home. And I tell you, talking about right now, getting out. To, Mark Martin was so glad to get out of Daytona and get to Rockingham. He mush, missed the Bush Series race there, finished dead last after engine problems in the Daytona 500. He was glad to get to Rockingham. And, and Mike, the other part is you, you literally are pushing and loose all the time. You turn the wheels, no, nope, nothing happens. You're pushing. Then the front bites, and then the back end comes around. Now you're loose, and the crew chief's driving you crazy about give me some feedback, maybe give me some feedback. I said, leave me alone. Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> so Martin trying to move up while one of his Roush Racing teammates, Matt Kenseth, leads this race. And another, Greg Biffle, is in 20th spot. Here's Jeannie. Well, guys, there are a lot of honorary pit crew members, but this young man is truly honorable. John Silver, the brother of front tire carrier Jeff Silver, is holding the sign today in the 16 pit. Wednesday, he's being deployed to Iraq as a member National Guard. So he takes off on February 25th. He's expected to stay there for 12 to 18 months. Doing some work today. Got a bigger job to take off for on Wednesday. We certainly salute you as we take a look again at John Silver. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. We wish him well, Jeannie, and 
send our best wishes to all of our troops especially those stationed abroad. I actually got a call from the Air National Guard, the 131st Aviation, a group from Company E that called me from Kuwait this week and said, hey, say hello to us. We're gonna be tuned in to Fox this weekend watching the race. And we're gonna ride with Greg Biffle. It's not gonna be a helmet cam. It's gonna be a suspension cam. And just look, at th th this is the shock. It never quits moving there. You see how much brake he uses getting in the corner? The rotors actually start to glow, a lot like they would at a short track. But if you just notice, DW, it never quits moving. The suspension is always moving at this racetrack. Yeah, and you can see the sidewall of that tire, Larry, how much it's got. See that belly it's got in it right down there? That's where it's flexing at, and that's uh, that's one of the changes in the tires this year. But you know, Larry, probably you're going to get a little brake, brake heat here like he did momentarily right there, because more than likely you don't have brake ducts on the car here. You probably don't, you know, use enough brake here just momentarily to where you don't want to open that front end up and let that uh, air go in. A lot of time the brakes here can just be a little security blanket for that driver driving just, off in the corner. I'm just touching them, I promise. That's, I'm there. Touch them. That's right. Dodge has dominated qualifying, but now we're at parity. Kansas Four leads Gordon Chevrolet ahead of Newman's Dodge. trying to get one of about two laps back. Remember the reason he is two laps down, he just had made a green flag stop before that caution with a flat tire. You're gonna have to be beside the guy if you're gonna push him up out of the way. Oh, Bobby Gordon here we makes go. it three, three wide. wide. Down into turn three, well, only momentarily. Yeah. You either are momentarily or you don't make it. Matt Kenseth wasted no time in stepping out with the lead. And actually, Tony Stewart back there, he's actually three laps down now. If he'd have got in front of Matt Kenseth, he would have been two laps down. And what happens here, you've got a fast car. I'm watching Jamie McMurray back in there, and he needs to get by those guys in front of him, but the leaders will run off and leave him, and he loses touch with them, and it takes him a long time to chase them back down. See how he's boxed in right there, nowhere to go. McMurray, 42 side of Dale Jarrett that's for fifth place right there the lab guys take up all the good lines you know and they leave you the what's left and all you can do is follow and wait Daryl I'm a little surprised none of those lap cars put up much of a challenge yeah, well Kenseth has got such a great start on Tony that uh, there wasn't any use I think what they're doing is fighting among themselves right now trying to be the first car lap down we listened in on Matt Kenseth well that 88 is pretty strong I don't know I see the 97 creeping up there on the scoreboard I don't know he's running but that, uh, pretty good. There's about four of them that are running pretty decent right now. 88, 97, and 40 look pretty good. And four, if there's any consolation, I'm having the time of my life. 160 miles an hour down the straightaway. You got time to look at the scoreboard? Uh, it's, if you're leading the race, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Not back in there where those other guys are. Rusty Wallace is closing back in on Matt Kenseth. Dick? He's had a big day, Mike. Not only is the car fast, he's just picked up another spot on pit road, running in second place. Larry Carter is his crew chief. How's your confidence level now? Well, we're pretty confident with our car right now. It's pretty rock solid. You know, had two good stops on pit road. Uh, Russ is doing an excellent job out there. Uh, you know, just a super job today. So, still early. We'll wait and see what happens here at the end of the race. Let's see a smile then. Thank you. There you go, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. I'm going to tell you, just remember, DW, we were talking about this the other day. A year ago, Rusty led the most laps here. He was the strongest race car for two-thirds of the race. The track changed. He lost the handle on it. This is the same chassis with a different body. He came here and tested for two days, ran over 500 miles in that test. Well, he's been fast here all week. He led both practice sessions, qualified well. But what Larry Boyd down has got to be careful is don't let Rusty talk him into doing something at the end of this race. Now, Matt Kenseth also mentioned Kurt Busch and Dale Jarrett. How about the 40? Sterling Marlins, last top five finish, September 2002 in Darlington. So, been a long time for Sterling as well, and he's having a great day. 
There, you scoundrel. You, I just now realized where you got all those fancy numbers from. Yeah, it's coming from our good friends in our production truck. Is that why you, you but you hid my, that monitor behind, I couldn't see it. I can't show you everything I know. Uh, <laughs> you see right now, though, they are four and a half seconds behind our leader, Matt Kenton, <laughs> right now. Hammond told me not to show you all my tricks. Well, it, it didn't take him very long to show me all his tricks, but it might take you a little bit longer. Fourth place battle, and they're kind of stacked up there. Is, is Sterling holding Dale Jarrett back and Jamie McMurray? Not uh, anymore. It's possible. Uh, Sterling's got that line, and ooh, boy, Dale just slid right in front of him. <laughs> right now, last time through three and four, these three guys ran three different lines. I think Jamie's got the best car. Right? He got held up there a little bit with uh, Robbie Gordon and some of them, the lap traffic, but he's looking mighty fast. Whoa, smoke out of Jarrett. Yep. He just blew. A little puff of smoke. I just saw it blow up. Sure the pop, We're coming in. There's there the, the motor tracks. Tough uh, break for the defending champion of this race as he coasts across the start finish line. Uh, no, motor's running. It's either transmission or the rear end. It sounds like the motor's running DW, but he has no acceleration, no power to the rear wheels for whatever reason. I, I saw a puff of smoke, and uh, it, it could have come out from under the car, but it looked like it came out the tailpipes to me. Well, it looked like to me it's coming out of the right side tailpipes right there. I, I think on further review, that, yeah. Jeff? Guys, right now we're listening to Dale Jarrett talk about his problems. He says the engine's running, but he thinks he has a problem with either the transmission or the gear and what it could be going on. Again, we're just speculating here, but if something hasn't happened internally, it could have happened somewhere maybe in this area right here with the main drive. A lot of times you may have a tendency to have a problem where this thing will break. As you can see, it connects into the back of the engine, and this exactly is what drives the entire drivetrain all the way back to the rear gear. Yeah, but uh, um, Jeff, if you could see what we see, that doesn't usually make you smoke out your tailpipes. And NASCAR must have saw something as well because the caution is out. Fifth caution of the day. Comes to lap 213. That, that is not a piece from Rusty's car. It, <laughs> it only looks like it. I don't <laughs> think Rusty wanted a caution no. right now. <laughs> that uh, obviously rolled out of the grandstand. All right, so who gets the lap back? Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon gets it back. Jeff Gordon will get the pardon from the tower. Pardon me. I'm coming Roy, through. Roy, I'm coming through, boys. Now, even though he gets the free pass, he cannot pit with the lead lap cars. He still has to wait for the second time through. I just saw this uh, smoke come out of Jared's car, and it's off the right side, and it's smoking out the tailpipes. I got to think that the engine might be running, but I think it's hurt. And you know, Daryl, when I walked through the garage area this morning, it may not be related as we see all the leaders come to pit road. They were contemplating changing the engine in that 88 car and they decided not to. Jeannie and Kurt Busch's pit. Well, the 97 at Kurt Busch, he's looking to take a little bite out of the rock. They've been trying to get more bite in the car. Air pressure adjustments to all four tires this time. And he said repeatedly every stop, please clean the windshield, Dick. Another nice smooth stop for Rusty Wallace right now. David Cox, the new Jack Man, is just letting go. Matty. Left side's going down. Matt Kenton's forward. He's going to beat his teammate down pit road. He said the last set of tires, which only had 12 laps on him, were a little more free. He didn't want to make any significant adjustments. Just a half a pound air pressure adjustment change in the right rear stand. But Jamie McMurray just getting off of pit road, Matt. He's complaining about the car being a little bit too loose. But that time, they didn't make any major adjustments. Also, to follow up on Dale Jarrett, he's just been pushed back towards the garage. And, and the reason you hear all the drivers complain constantly about, I can't see, I can't see, if you're headed down into turn one, you're looking right into the sun, and it absolutely blinds you. And you put the little of that sand that we see around here, uh, get that on the windshield. Fortunately, we now have tear-offs. Back in the old days, we didn't have tear-offs. You just had to kind of fake it and get on down there with the help of a spotter. Under caution for the fifth time today, pit stop complete for Matt Kenseth and Robbie Reiser's Killer Bees as they celebrate. We'll be right back.
One more lap to the restart here at Rockingham. Here's where the Coca-Cola Racing family is running in today's race. And that out list is growing. In addition to Petty and Jarrett, it includes Carl Long, Jimmy Johnson, Kirk Shelmerdine, and Joe Rutman. Steve. Well, Mike, just as Carl Long started his tumble, I reported that Casey Kane said his car is getting tighter, but that's okay. He likes it. The track temp uh, has dropped from 87 degrees at race start to 79 degrees. They drop air pressure on the left side tires on their last stop, Dick Bergeron. Rusty Wallace looking for his first win in 100 starts. Car had gotten a little bit loose before the caution flag. That cost him two spots. Not the best pit stop, 15.24. That cost him one more. He'll take the green in fifth position. Robbie Gordon was the first car one lap down when the caution came out, so he got the free pass. Brendan Gaughan is now in that position on the restart. Matt Kenseth to bring him around for a restart at lap 279, and we'll crank it up for you. Track turn two now completely in shade as Jamie McMurray tries to chase down Matt Kenseth for the lead. Yeah, I believe that's the best car right now. Uh, saw the same thing yesterday in the Bush race. We didn't hear much out of McMurray running around the top five. All of a sudden, uh, comes down near the end of the show, and there he was leading the thing and winning it. But DW, where Matt Kenseth has been so good since he's been leading this race, his own restarts getting such a jump on everybody. He got the right gears in his gearbox. Our Quaker State aerial coverage will show you the sun and the shade here at Rockingham. This is the north end of the track, turns three and four, bathed in sunlight. You know, Steve Burns was talking about the track temperature right now. Halfway through turn one and two, all the way to the exit of two is in the shade. That track temperature has really come down. That will make a car tighter and slide around less. But coming down the front straightaway, Daryl, you face that sun, and the lower it gets in the sky, the tougher it gets. Oh, yeah, and uh, they, you know, guys keep on complaining about, you know, get that tear off off the windshield. Seventh place battle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Sterling Marlin, and Ward Burton in the zero. And Ward's just been solid all day long, right there flirting with the top 10, anywhere from about 8th to about 15th. Tell you who's really getting stronger and stronger as this day goes on. Also, though, right in front of Ward Burton in the zero is Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. Remember Ricky Rudd in the 21 car. He's several laps down, but this is a battle for seven, six and seven. Matt has more on the point leader. Mike, at the top of the show, we documented how Dale Earnhardt Jr. has struggled here at the Rock. Never led, still hasn't yet today. He's never scored a top 10 finish. He's still working on the top 10. They have made significant wedge adjustments on the last three stops. Dale Jr. says, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. The car is not perfect, but it is definitely getting there. And right now, he is going to become an aggravated human being with Ricky Rudd in that 21 car because Ricky's two laps down, and he's running right where Dale wants to be running that eight car. But you know there's a word that he used that, that every driver, they strive for, perfect. You want that car to be perfect because when the car is doing the work, you can just drive it so much better. You don't have to worry about even what the car is going to do. That's why driver's never happy when he goes home. He never got it perfect. Uh, here comes Burton, Ward Burton. Chasing seventh place. 
He actually just moved into seventh place. Ward Burton in that zero car. He his car is working right around the bottom of this racetrack. What's messing me up is Elliot Sadler's car. They didn't put the colors back on that <laughs> yeah. car. Yeah. It looks it, it, as it gets over on the back stretch. It looks like that that uh, dairy car we had a couple of years ago. The move over move the move over. Car. Well, if you can find the colors, you'll become much richer with the promotion <laughs> they have going right now. That's true. Sterling Marlin trying to hold that pack off. <laughs> A little further back, Michael Waltrip in the Napa Chevy, Jeremy Mayfield in the 19, and Jeff Gordon's DuPont Chevy coming back up in the running order, up to 15. After getting that free pass a while ago, getting back on the lead lap. His car's just not that good on the long run, though. It's strong in the beginning, but not good on the long run. Hey, they're staying grouped up, though. You know, as the, as the race winds down, uh, it seems like the guys all get closer together. Start fighting for every position. As you can see right here, I mean, this, these guys have been grouped up like this forever. And Craven and Mark, Mark Martin got together there. And I tell you, Mark Martin, his guys have kept him on the lead lap. He's sitting there in 16th after being involved in that wreck on the backstretch. Steve, a lot of adjustments on that car. Yeah, Larry Mack, and they had extensive damage to the left front fender of that race car. They've been on pit road by my count at least six times. Mark had gotten loose prior to that incident with Carl Long, but they've done a great job of taping up the nose of that race car. There's the damage to the front of Mark Martins. Viagra Ford. Here's what just happened. He yeah. slid up into Craven. With the down, you know, with the do nose damaged, the car's going to push it a little bit more, and he just pushed off the corner and got into the car beside it. This was a view from Robbie Gordon in the 31 car. That also gives you a good shot of what driving off into turn one looks like into this sun this late in the race. That's why you run up on the car in front of you so close before you realize he's there. You do not see him. You really can't see him. Mayfield gets past 15 of Michael Waltrip and moves Jeremy up to 14th position. 100 laps to go. The defending cup champion Matt Kenseth leads Jamie McMurray by eight tenths of a second. 3.2 seconds off the lead is the Sharpie number 97. That's Kurt Busch. Four seconds off the lead is Casey Kane, and Rusty Wallace is six seconds back. There's Casey. Fourth place, 3.9 seconds back. A couple of lap cars, then Rusty Wallace, who's in fifth place, 6.4 seconds from the leader. If I'm Matt Kenseth, and I know that's Jamie McMurray back there closing on me, I'd be worried knowing how he runs here. He really has this place dialed in. Dale Earnhardt Jr., sixth place, 7.7 seconds behind the leader. And right on his bumper is Ward Burton in the net zero Chevy. Now Sterling Marlin is a second behind them. His Dodge has moved away from Elliott Sadler's Ford by about two seconds. Hey, a guy on the move. There's Elliot Sadler in the 38, but the guy that just went by him, Kevin Harvick in the 29 car, he just moved in the ninth, started back in 32nd. He was on the verge of going a lap down twice early in the race. So I think track temperature, track conditions, plus adjustments by Todd Berry in that group has him back in the hunt. And the same way about him yesterday. You know, he didn't run that well until the very end of that bush race. They gambled on pitch strategy, got him up front, and got him a decent finish. And today, here he is closing laps. And Harvick had to overcome that penalty restarting at the end of the longest line for cutting out from the pit entrance when a caution came out. Our pole sitter Ryan Newman blew the field away by a quarter of a second in qualifying but now finds himself in 11th place. Matt. He was as deep as 14th Mike on the pit stop. The left front tire changer Dennis Terry when he's working on that left front the impact gun broke a lug stuck in the socket. He had to wait until Joe Pietti was done on the left rear and then Joe went up and hit the lugs on the left front. The biggest hindrance though for Ryan Newman they feel like they can't keep up with the racetrack. They continue to try to free up that 12 car but the changes they continue to make aren't enough. The car still is tight run after run. 
Kane. Meanwhile, Casey Kane driving that train. He's pulled right down on Kurt Busch for third place. They're having a heck of a battle. They've been side by side there for a few laps, and then Casey fell back behind uh, Kurt to see maybe if he can set him up again. But he's really good right here. Casey is coming off turn four. You know, no matter what happens to Casey Kane in these last 93 laps, I have been so impressed. Can you just think of the pressure on this kid? This is only his second Nextel Cup start. He's in the nine car that Bill Elliott has been synonymous for for years. Plus, this is a car that won the race here in the fall. That's called pressure. And he's handling it nicely. Meanwhile, Matt Kenseth's rearview mirror is going to be filling up with Jamie McMurray. Just half a second separate them. Mike, I know you're going to agree with me, and I'm going to bring this up right now with Matt Kenseth. Regardless of what he does, so much talk about this chase for the championship being changed because of the way he ran away with the point system. He didn't run that well in the last 10 races. You and I were talking the other day that the reason he ran that way, he was protecting his lead. He's showing these guys now. Change it. I'll adapt to it. Sure. Jeff Gordon has caught Ryan Newman's 12 and Kevin Harvick's 29, and Gordon's going to try to leapfrog them both to 10th place. Well, Jeff's kind of had an up and down day. He got those laps down there early, and uh, he started to climb back into the hunt here. Uh, he's still almost a half lap down to the leaders, but uh, it's good good recovery. Speaking of leaders, we do have two of them right now. They're neck and neck headed into turn one. Jamie McMurray in the 42 car, right where he finished the Bush race yesterday. He takes the lead. Well, let's see, looking back a year ago, you know, Kurt Busch stormed to the front, had a really fast car, pretty much ran the tires off it. Dale Jarrett conserved his stuff and won the race. They still have a way to go. I just said, nine laps. I got a lot of confidence in McMurray. I just watched him run those Bush races here, four of them, and he's won in three different, with three different cars and three different teams. Uh, I don't see why he couldn't do that again today. Three drivers in history have won both the Bush race and the Cup race on the same weekend at Daytona. Bobby Allison, Daryl Waltrip, and last week Dale Earnhardt Jr. Nobody has ever done the weekend double here at The Rock. get-go from the get-go all the way through a run whereas Jamie and uh, and Casey have been a little bit better on that long run so I think that Kent is in pretty darn good shape I was gonna say Jamie McMurray's first obstacle is gonna be Casey Kane in that nine car because Casey looks like he's getting off the corner much better than Jamie McMurray in the 42 right now any way you look at it though you got to Kent the champion and you got these kids chasing him I think that's pretty cool a little further back Rusty Wallace and Ryan Newman battle for sixth and seventh with Kurt Busch, the 97. Sixth, seventh, and eighth. For more on Rusty, here's Dick. Every race driver wants his last stop of the day to be the best stop of the day. In Rusty Wallace's case, the last stop was by far the worst stop. Over 17 seconds, he came in second. He went out in sixth position. The crew is still trying to get the uh, television cameras to work so they can replay it. Even they haven't figured out what went wrong. And it, 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 for a guy that's trying to win a race, had won a race in a couple of years, under a lot of fire, under a lot of pressure, that's just one of those distractions he did not need. By contrast, Matt Kenseth's pit stop was more than three seconds better than Wallace's final pit stop. Now, the restart had Kenseth alongside his Roush Racing teammate, Martin Martin. And we're now been told that Martin and his owner and crew chief have been called to what we formerly knew as the big red truck after the race, what we now know as the Oval, Oval Office. Office. If you look on the side of the truck, it's got a big oval on it. We race on the oval, seem like the perfect name to me, the Oval Office. I like it. You go there and you have a little summit meeting. Doesn't matter who's, uh, what administration's in, it always works. 
the last lap, Matt Kenseth and Casey Kane, they ran identical speeds, but the two laps prior to that, Casey Kane chopped about a half a second off of Matt Kenseth's lead. He is slowly closing that gap. And they're running two different grooves completely. Casey Kane has been right around the bottom. Matt Kenseth, along with Jamie McMurray in the 42, been right up against the wall. Yeah, now's when you want to find the bottom because that's the fastest way around. The track is shaded. There's no more sun. Should be nice and cool. A lot of grip. Got to go, baby. Let's go back and have a look at that restart, Daryl. What NASCAR asks the lap cars to do is show respect for the cars on the lead lap when you restart. See anything wrong here? They both take off together. Mark's, you know, got good speed through the corner. Now possibly right here with the bent up front end, he should have probably dropped down out of the way right there. I think that's probably what they were talking about right here and even through three and four. But as you can see for. You know, I, I give that a 50 50. I, I, yeah, I, I think if, if Casey Kane had had a better restart, Mark wouldn't have been able to pull up. In and front. here's the thing about Mark Martin. Uh, he shows no favorites. I know that Matt's his teammate, but I, I just don't. Mark's not that kind of guy. Well, that's why they review these things down in the Oval Office. And it doesn't hurt to come into sure. the Oval Office every now and then and have a meeting. Just kind of look around, see what it looks like. Mark hadn't probably been in there for a while. Just looks don't want the same on the inside. Trust me, I've already been in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't want to have a reserved seat. <laughs> Matt Kenseth, eight tenths of a second up on Casey Kane. Jamie McMurray, three tenths back of Kane. Sterling Marlin, two and a half seconds back of them. Boy, Jamie is doing what he did yesterday. He's right there in third place, and that car really, his cars here, his Bush car, and the Cup car, they get in the corner so well, particularly the third turn. He really has a knack for floating it in there really fast. That last lap, he was quicker than Matt Kenseth, then Casey Kane in the nine car. And if he's a little loose there, they may have adjusted that rear air pressure just a tad. It might take a lap or two to free him up where he can get going here. Look at him close in here at three and four. And that's what I love about this racetrack. You know, you catch somebody here, you can pass them. You don't have to follow them. And I think you're right, Daryl. If this last restart came with 50 laps to go, I like McMurray. But with only 30 laps to work with, that may not be enough time for him. It's you gonna know, be, it's going to be a nail biter. And right smack in the middle of those two contenders. What a fabulous job by rookie Casey Kane. Yes, he's with the team that won here last, last fall. Yes, he has all the notes that Bill Elliott relied on to get him to victory lane, but he's a rookie. He was the subject of a big battle between Ford and Dodge as to who he would drive for this year. He's trying to fill Bill Elliott's shoes. What a job he's done. And why do these young men get these opportunities? Because of what he's doing right here today. Because they deserve it and because they can step up. There are the contenders. The Ray Bestis Rookie Award. Casey Kane, well out ahead of Sauter, Wimmer, Vickers, and gone. Wimmer's, he's back there in 15th spot. He's had a decent day as well. Every one of these rookies were winners in the Bush Series last year, except for Brendan Gone. He pretty much dominated the Craftsman Truck Series as far as wins. Yeah, Brendan's probably more of a rookie, a true cross the board rookie than any of anybody else is, because he's got the least amount of time in these cars. Here's our Daytona 500 winner and the next Cup point leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's four and a half seconds off the lead at what has been the worst of his tracks, but is in fifth place and he is the top Chevrolet in this race. And remember Matt Kenseth last year, they won the most races the year before, but they analyzed their program over the winter and they said, look, we know we can win races, but we gotta be more consistent. Dale Jr. knows he can win races, but he's gotta be more consistent. Maybe he learned from last year. Every race takes on a greater importance this year in the points. NASCAR, after 26 races this season, will throw a caution flag on the season, bring all of the top 10 and everyone else within 400 points of the leader up to just one car length apart, five points apart, and restart the season with 10 laps to go to chase the championship. You know what's at the end of that championship? Five million dollars. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I like. Uh, <laughs> you know, you forget, forget how you get there. I just like the, the reward, the bonus. And it's like everything we do in this sport. Once racing started back in Daytona, it doesn't matter what it is. We got to race every week.
we'll deal with it as we go forward. And you know, going back to Dale Earnhardt Jr. and eight car, I know they came here with winning on their mind, but trust me, a top five finish for them would be like a win. It would be his best yet. So that's a big, that's a big game. Jeff Burton goes in the garage. He's done for the day. Ricky Craven comes out of the garage to run a few more laps, and we got a weekend off. Wait, we just started. I'm not happy. I don't want a weekend I'm off. Not we happy just started about that at all. But then we'll go to Las Vegas in two weeks' time with NASCAR oh, on Fox. Another racetrack where Matt Kenseth is the defending champion of that race. Eva Las Vegas. Matt Kenseth won from 25th starting spot here two years ago. Today he started 23rd. So his qualifying fortunes have improved. But at the end of the race, same story. We're tightening up here for the lead. I'm telling you, it's getting closer and closer for those front three right there. Oh, yeah, this is not over. And they're also coming up on some lap cars, and we know they can play a factor in this thing, especially near the later laps of the race. Inside 10 laps to go. They may just all three be side by side at the checker. Casey Kane has caught Matt Kenseth. We've seen some exciting finishes here through the years. One goes high, one goes low on that last lap. And we got a drag race to the start finish line. I believe Casey's a little better than Kenseth in three and four. Maybe Kenseth's just a little better than one and two. Now this this is where you got to be careful as a rookie. You got a faster car. You've caught this guy. Do you have the knowledge? Do you have the what it takes to get by him? Is this like a dog that chases cars going down the street? You yeah. catch one. Now I caught one. What do yeah. I do with yeah. it? Wrong, wrong. My yeah. dog. Is <laughs> Not only that, but he's got to McMurray, you know, breathing down his back, too. So and look at all the time that Kenseth just lost in three and four on that lap. And just Kenseth. don't don't forget about that guy in third. Remember, he won in his second next tail cup start. You know what it is for Casey Kane? His second next tail cup start. And, and one Bush said he race said he won here. Michael and uh, Jeff Green were racing for the lead. They got together in three. He drove under them and won the race and picked up the name McLucky. And he did it yesterday. He drove underneath two cars that got together, one a leader, one a lap car. Guys, he got a heck of a runoff turn four that time. Jamie McMurray in the 42 car right around the bottom. The other two cars were at the top. They're all going to hang near the bottom in one and two this time. Five laps to go. Everybody is right now. They're doing all they can do. They're not leaving anything on the table. Matt's got to kind of wonder where these guys are going to go. Now that time McMurray in the 42, he goes to the top side. He saw the lap car on the bottom, thought they would catch him, so he was forced to go to the top. And something uh, I don't think I've ever seen in NASCAR racing. The starter will not wave the checkered flag. Our grand marshal for a day, John Cyrus, our contest winner, is going to get to do it. But who's he going to wave it over? Right now, he don't know. I think it's going to be a photo finish. There's McMurray, pulls right up to the back of Casey Kane in the nine car. Now he's moved his car to the top the last two laps in three and four. They drive off into one. They cannot see now. The sun's right in their eyes. See, I think Matt has an advantage. He knows just how hard to drive his car. And these guys behind him, they're trying to drive harder and harder to get around him, and it's going to hurt them. There'll be two laps to go this next time. There's one lap car up in front of him, Derek Cope in the 50 car. And he won't be a factor. He pulls down and out of the way. Two crew chiefs looking on. Robbie Reiser, Tommy Baldwin. Two to go. Three cars that could win it. Kenseth. Boy, the nine got Coming a great one off the that back. time. He went up a little high, but he couldn't carry it all the way off. Had to get out of the throttle a tiny bit over there off the two. Look, Beck Murray looks like he's going to go to the bottom this time. This is where he's That's been so good. That's where he should have been. I, I would have gone to the bottom sooner if I'd have been him. He just, just like yesterday. The pass. White flag this time. One to go, boys. All right, somebody's got to go different. Can't all go the same way. Kenseth went low in one. Here Changes comes, lanes. Here comes Kane on the outside. Just can't quite mat it right there off of turn two. McMurray almost hit the wall exiting two and drops back. Yeah, he lost a lot of ground right there last time through three and four, though. Here they Kane come. goes to the bottom. Kane comes to the bottom. It's he gets a close. run. He's got a good run on him. Side by side of the line. Kenseth. Kenseth. Told you to be a Fomoko finish. Matt Kenseth wins the Subway 400, his eighth career win. One one hundredth of a second. That was a great, but you know that was really smart on Kane's part. He saved his best for the last lap, the last turn. Here it is again. Coming out of two, McMurray got a little loose. It made it a two-car race. Here they come to the line. Kane got such a runoff turn four. Ooh, baby. Wow. 
All right. And he asked his team three different times, are you sure that I won? Each time they said, yes, it's a photo finish, but you are the winner for the first time in 34 races. Matt Kenseth goes to victory lane, a hug by car owner Jack Roush. Matt, you said on the radio that was the most fun you've ever had in a race car, period. Uh, it was a blast. The end was a little stressful. Um, everybody's been asking me about rookies this year. I said, man, you got to watch out for Casey King because he's kind of the sleeper. But um, it was a great day for our DeWalt car. I got to thank our sponsors real quick. DeWalt, uh, Smirnoff Ice, Triple Black, uh, Carhartt, G, Lexley, and all the guys that help us out. But uh, our four Taurus was stuck good today, and uh, I just had a blast. You know, everybody... Uh, at the Roush engine department and the Yates engine department, everybody combining that has done such a great job. We just got awesome engines. We got a better body this year, and uh, I think you're going to see a lot of this this year. Maybe not for me, but I think from all the Roush boys. So this is a good way to start it off. Now, you asked three times how close it was. Let's take a look at the monitor. You can just see how close that finish was, Matty. Yeah, I think we needed uh, every bit of the power we had there at the end. I knew he was going to be close, and I didn't want to spin the tires off of four. And, uh, uh, he was getting air off my door there, and I just tried to uh, stay away from him. But I probably should have pulled down a little bit, but it was a close race. But uh, these guys have worked hard for this, and uh, feels good to be here. This is for everybody who says we couldn't leave laps and win races. This feels good. Sure is. Five straight top tens here at The Rock, including the win today. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.